Hi and welcome to day one in a new project that I'm starting and uh, in this project I'm going to be focusing more on lighting and look development for three scenes that have already been modeled up. One scene is going to be an interior kitchen. Uh, the next scene is going to be a street scene uh, that is uh, uh, kind of like a downtown scene. Uh, probably put some cars and stuff into it. And the third scene is going to be a country, a rural scene with, uh, uh, you know, a barn, uh, uh, a field, uh, maybe a fence and some in, in a dirt road. Uh, like I say, these scenes have already been modeled up and are ready to go, but the one thing I want to do is I want to be able to render these scenes in uh, RenderMan uh, 21 uh, using the PXR surface material and uh, for either Maya or Blender. Currently I have uh, Maya open and you can see that it is uh, set for RenderMan. Uh, but uh, the workflow pretty much uh, is the same for Blender as it is for uh, uh, Maya and I'll be showing that in both uh, as we go along. But let's uh, go ahead and uh, talk about the materials that I want to add and I want to be able to do this in what's called PBR rendering. And you may be wondering or maybe you already know what PBR rendering is but let's take a quick look at it. PBR rendering. PBR rendering is called physically based rendering. And what that means is the materials are authored in a manner which that they can be applied to assets or the objects which will react to all virtual lighting conditions as it would in the real world. Uh, to show you a couple quick examples, I have this uh, default uh, uh, sphere that I got through uh, Substance uh, Painter and uh, it has a metal and rust material. These are known as a metal and a dielectric material added to the same object. This same object having exactly the same textures applied and uh, the same parameters, I threw these into different environment conditions and you can see that they just react well no matter what the lighting conditions I stick them into they're all pretty much basically the same. What Now the benefits of PBR rendering is that the materials well the material okay correctly authored textures are applied to materials which removes the guesswork in authoring the surface attributes. Objects will appear correct in all lighting conditions and by applying this it provides a consistent workflow which will create consistent artwork. In the past uh, we may uh, uh, have gone and uh, taken a, a photograph or uh, something from the web and we made it a tileable texture we applied it to the diffuse or color channel and then we manipulated sliders and whatever to uh, apply uh, uh, you know certain parameters to it uh, maybe the roughness or uh, the glossiness or uh, the specularity or whatever we've applied all these things and once they're applied we put them into a scene but the problem is is once we put it into a different scene it didn't really react the way that we wanted so we'd have to go in and retweak everything well with PBR rendering you author the materials one time and no matter what you do, when you put those into a, uh, a scene, uh, let's say I made a table and I use that table inside, but then all of a sudden I take that table and I stick it outside. 
uh, maybe sitting on the grass in the front yard and it will look the materials on it will react to that real world lighting exactly the way that it should as if I had an actual model or if I had the actual table and I stuck it out in the front yard and took a photograph of it. And that is the benefit of PBR rendering. Now I'm not going to remake the wheel in explaining the uh, physics of uh, PBR rendering. There's a lot of great guides out there. Uh, Algomorithic that uh, produces uh, substance designer and substance uh, painter which is a great um, uh, software that uh, that authors uh, really nice textures uh, they have a PBR uh, rendering guide as well as ben Blender Guru uh, and Alex Petra all of these guides are very good in explaining the uh, physics of of uh, PBR rendering and how light uh, reacts with materials and and the whole theory behind PBR rendering. So rather than get into all that, I just invite you to go ahead and uh, these are all on YouTube. Uh, they can be found very easily and uh, they're highly insightful. But what I would like to talk about is basic PBR workflows. Uh, there's two basic workflows. One is called the metal rough workflow and the other one is the specular glossy workflow. The metal rough workflow uses something called base color, a metalless map, and a roughness map. Why the specular glossy workflow uses diffuse color, specular, and glossy maps. Common to both of these, and they are optional maps, is the normal map and the height map. Neither the normal or the height map really depend, uh, really uh, uh, is necessary for PBR rendering, but if you want your materials uh, to look really correct, they should be added, but they're common to both. Uh, work And these workflows will depend on which one you use, will depend somewhat on personal preference, but also upon the rendering engines and software that you're using. Unity 5 uses a metallic smoothness uh, as well as a specular smoothing smoothness. Now, I use the word smoothness there because that's what they call it, but actually the smoothness map is nothing more than a glossy map. Same thing, different name. Uh, Unreal Engine uses the metal roughness map uh, or workflow. And you're pretty well stuck. That's what you got to use. And those are the textures or the uh, maps that you have to output for PBR rendering within Unity. Blender Cycles. Uh, Default does not do PBR rendering. You have to uh, uh, create a shader for PBR rendering, uh, which uh, can be found rather easily on the web. I uh, believe the uh, Blender group uh, put one out, and I think uh, Blender Cookie does as well. But basically, they use the specular glossy uh, uh, workflow uh, like I say, with the correct shader, which you can get very easily by looking through the web. RenderMan version 20 pretty much used a metal roughness using PXR Disney. However, with the advent of RenderMan 21, you have the option of using PXR Disney, which used the metal roughness map or workflow, and the specular glossy using PXR surface. Notice that, but you should note that the glossy map has to be inverted to work correctly. And I'll get into that uh, when we go to do the actual hookups with, uh, with uh, PXR surface. And PXR surface is the 
shader that I want to use uh, in my project. Uh, recommended uh, PX, uh, PBR texture mapping uh, software that is probably the most common and you don't really stuck to this you can author them yourself with uh, opening up Photoshop or GIMP and and uh, making these maps yourself but uh, the two really good authoring uh, software is Substance Designer and Painter uh, made by uh, Algo Marithic. Uh, indie licenses are not all that expensive. They can be purchased at uh, $19 a month for the full suite. And Quixel Suite 2, which has an indie license, a uh, one-time purchase of $139 or an academic version for $69. Uh, there are some important surface attributes for PBR rendering, and that's everything has Fresnel and everything has reflectivity. These are kind of tied together. Fresnel is kind of a, uh, it's an aspect that we kind of forget about when uh, we're dealing with uh, materials. And that's, uh, well, if we look at this scene here, we see a uh, lake scene and we see the reflection in the background on the water. But as we get closer, you can see the rocks or the bottom uh, uh, of the uh, pool there. And what's happening is light as it comes in and it's further away or along the edge, you have almost 100% reflectivity. But as you get closer to your point of view here and the light becomes more shallow, uh, it begins to go through the surface and strike the bottom and you're getting the reflection of the, of the lake bottom uh, through the water. This is called the Fresnel effect. Uh, an important part of Fresnel is roughness increases as Fresnel or as roughness increases or the surface defects on the materials uh, decreases, the Fresnel effect decreases. I'm going to skip these next two here and I'm going to go into examples of reflectivity. If you look here, this is, exa is again the same uh, textures applied. Uh, and the same mapping applied to the same ball, but put into a different uh, uh, into a different uh, environment, and you can see that the reflections on the material or on the ball uh, looks different between the two environments, and you can look at the metal and you can definitely see immediately the difference but also you can see the difference in the dielectric or the non-metal surface. The non-metal surface in both scenes picks up the environment. It reflects the environment to some extent. Now the reflection, uh, the amount of reflection is different between metal or raw metal and dielectric or non-metal surfaces. In this ball we have both. Uh, reflectivity for uh, a metal uh, pretty much ranges between 60 and 100 percent whereas in a dielectric surface such as the rust here or the non-metal which amount is also uh, deals with paint and some other things. Uh, it has uh, basically about a three to five percent reflection. There's uh, two types of uh, materials. Like I said, there's raw metals, which has no diffuse color. You may say, well, hold it. How can that be? If I look at a uh, let's say a raw metal, uh, let's say it's gold or copper or something like that, I can definitely see a color. But what you're getting is the reflectance value drawn from a specular channel that shows that 
color. It's a reflectance. It's not really uh, a diffuse color. Whereas dielectrics or nonmetals, they do have a diffuse color. A quick look, let's take a look at these uh, texture maps that come out. Uh, just a real quick, o quick overview. As you notice that uh, there's a difference between the two workflows. Uh, one is the spec loss and the other one is the um, is the uh, base metal or base rough uh, workflow. And what's happening is a little different. Your, let's deal with the base color, base color rough first. And what it is, is these are plugged into the color map or some would say the diffuse channel, although that's not entirely correct. But um, when you put a base color, that is actually a, a, a map or a color map that has two values in it. It has the diffuse channel, which is basically the color of the dielectrics or the nonmetals, but it also has a metal reflectance value. Whereas, and what it does is it uses a metallic map to differentiate between the what is um, a dielectric and what is a metal. In a metal map, everything that is white is metal. So therefore, when it when you're rendering, the it looks at the base color map. It then goes back to, it then references the metallic map and says, oh, this area here is white, so it's metal. And so there you're getting your reflectance value, basically the color of the material that you're seeing. Where it's black, it's saying, no, hold it, this is a dielectric or a nonmetal, and so your color, your reflectance value or your color of the object will be this rust color here. Where you're getting these gray values, it's kind of a mixture between uh, the base metal and the, uh, or I should say the metal and dielectric surface, uh, where you got speckling where there's some metal and some let's say rust or dielectric surface coming through. The diffuse channel, oops, let me go back. The diffuse channel, if you're using a diffuse map, is pretty well set to where you're getting your rust colors and all of that coming through in a color map, but the uh, black areas denotes nothing. It, it's, it's set to, it's saying this is a metal surface and therefore there has no color. You got to get your color from let's say your specular channel. And I'll show you a specular map here in just a little bit. Let's take a look at gloss versus roughness map. Now what I told, said before when, in, when we're using RenderMan 21 PXR surface, that we're using a spec gloss uh, workflow, but not quite. Actually, it's a hybrid. Uh, what uh, PXR Surface is actually calling for is a roughness map, not a gloss map. So PXR Surface is kind of a hybrid workflow. But the difference between a gloss map and a roughness map is one is the inverse of the other. So if I was to take a, if all I have is a gloss map and I need a roughness map, uh, all I, I don't have to go back and reauthor it. All I have to do is invert the colors and there it is. And the same way if I have a roughness map and I need a glossiness map, all I have to do is invert it and then I have a gloss map. The specular map, which is also an RGB map, which is used uh, in a spec gloss workflow uh, 
pretty much works this way that you're getting your reflectance value uh, instead of relying on the diffuse channel it's using the reflectance value of the specular map to get that coloration let's say of your metal if uh, in this example I'm using kind of like an iron or a titanium or something like that and so this is the reflectance value that you would get would be these gray areas if I was uh, had that as being copper this would appear more coppery looking whereas the specularity that would come through on the dielectric would be these other areas here this these browns and whatever and that's pretty much a, a, a kind of a workflow or a, an overview but now let's see how we can apply that to Maya now as I said before I authored these materials using substance painter and you can see here that I have everything enabled here uh, this particular material I'm using is a metal uh, metal with um, a brushed metal with rust on it uh, and it being a substance I'm able to output this uh, in any workflow I want but right now I just want to pull all of them out I want to pull a diffuse a specular a height normal rough loss color and metal so I could use this in any workflow so to do that I come up here and I'm going to export these textures or these maps and you can see that uh, I've got this all going to a particular uh, uh, in my source images it's going to a folder that says sphere and I'm going to put it out as an EXR and uh, if you look here you can see that I'm outputting all of these maps so I'm going to go ahead and export these and you can see that these maps well hold on here let me open this up here details there we go you can see that I put out all of these maps here uh, I've got my base color my differential gloss height metal nor roughness and spec so now that I've got that and I'm going to go ahead and just save that and it should close here there we go I'm now in Maya and I'm getting ready to put this into I'm getting ready to because right now uh, I'm using the PXR surface material but if you look in my hypershade I don't have any maps connected to it but let's first look at the PXR Disney which was the old uh, version that uh, we had to use before so I'm going to come to my ball here and I'm going to assign an existing material and I'm going to you know put in the PXR Disney uh, map here and now I'm going to hook this all up using PXR Disney using the old workflow that was used before so let me kind of move these over a little bit here and to do that I'm going to come in with I'm going to go to render man patterns and I'm going to find my PXR texture node I'm going to bring that out and I'm going to need this at least uh, uh, three more time or two more times so uh, first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to change the filter to kelp moron because I like that I'm not going to have to use linearize because quite frankly uh, because I'm using a 32-bit uh, texture uh, it will be pretty much already linearized so I don't need to check that box there if I was using like a JPEG or an 8-bit I would definitely have to linearize it so I'm going to duplicate that two more times there we go and then uh, I'm also going to put in a PXR normal map and to keep everything straightforward I'm going to go ahead and name these 
So I'm going to go Control C and Control V. And if you remember in PXR Disney, I'm going to be using a metal rough, which calls for a base material. So I'm going to call that PXR Disney Base. I'm going to call this one Control V PXR Metal M E T A L Metal Map. Uh, this is going to be a Control V PXR Rough Map, and this one Control V is going to be a Nor Map. Okay, my base color map is pretty easy. I'm just going to take my RGB and put that into exactly what it calls for because PXR Disney asks for a base color map, which is that uh, albedo map with a metal reflectance value added in. My metal map, well, these are black and white. Well, let me go down to the norm map first. I'm going to come in here to result N or normal, and I'm going to put that into bump normal, and I'm good to go. Now these two right here, I'm going to have a small problem with because I don't have, I'm not putting a color in and I don't have a luminance or a black and white channel to plug in. Now in the past, a lot of times I took the result R, which is the red channel, and I'd plug that into my metallic. However, the problem is, is I'm not utilizing all of my channels. I'm not using the the black and white that I get from the green and the blue channel as well. So to fix that, I can use a PXR to float. I can name this as uh, PXR. Oops. PXR Disney Metal F L O A T float. I can then come in and I can grab my RGB and then put that into there. Now I'm grabbing all of those channels and all I have to do is change that to a luminance value which is basically pulling the black and white values out of all three channels and then I can take the result F out of that and I can plug that into the metallic. And now I got that full range of all three channels. I can duplicate this node. I can change its name to uh, rough float. I can take my RGB channel, plug that in there, take my result F, and plug that into my roughness. Now to grab these, uh, I've now authored all these, but uh, Renderman or is a little funny in that if I look at these maps here that I've contrived, I got my sphere base map, but when I go to input these, if I put in this, these EXR files, Renderman is going to take them and convert them into a text type file, so it would be called base color dot TEX or text file, and that's what it's going to use to render with. Well, that's a two-step process. It's got to look at the XR and then convert it to a text file before it renders it. So I found that the rendering works a lot quicker and easier if I very simply come to this little button right here, I'll pick this directory, and there's my directory with uh, all of my materials in there, or all of my textures. And then I'm going to pick that same directory for an output, uh, save, and when I hit OK, it's going to go through and it's going to convert all of those EXRs to text files. And it's almost done. There it says done. And if we look now, I've got a text file for my base color, for my uh, uh, di uh, diffuse, my gloss, my height. Everything is got now text files. 
and it'll speed up my rendering by doing that. So let me go back here and let me grab my base color. I'm going to come into here, go into my source image. Well, there's a little quickie there. And I'm going to come to my base color text and grab it and put that in. My metal map, I'm going to do the same thing. Come over here and there's my metal map. My roughness map, I'm going to come over here, grab this, and grab my metalness map, my normal, come over here and grab my normal map. And there I go, I'm good to go. So now if I render this scene, uh, let me go File, Save. Sometimes you got to File, or uh, Save, and uh, pull it back out for it to render correctly. All right, I'm going to do my render. It's uh, going through, it's looking, and there I go. I've got my render, and it's uh, using PXR Disney, uh, but it's not really set the way that I would like it to be set. I've got some problems here. Uh, some of them are pretty evident. Uh, PXR Disney is kind of an all-in-one uh, shader, although this is PBR rendering, it's not really 100% what I'd call correct. There is some issues with it. So I'm going to stop that render, and now I'm going to, well, let me see, am I on the right one? Yeah, PXR Disney. Let's go ahead and change shaders real quick and go to the one that I really want to use which would be my PXR surface. Now if I do a render on this right now, and take a look at it, you can see that I'm really not getting, you know, it's just a default, it's, it's not really rendering correctly. So let's go ahead and stop that render, and let's go ahead and hook everything up the way that it should be. So let's open up my hypershade here. I'm going to bring it over. And I'm now using this. So again, I'm going to need uh, in my patterns, I'm going to need uh, some PXR textures. I'm going to change this to Catmaran because I like that uh, uh, the best. And uh, then I'm going to go Shift-D, duplicate that a couple times. Let me move that up a little bit. Put this over here. And I'm also going to need another uh, normal map. There we go. And I'll stick that right there. I'll take these here, and I'm just going to kind of move them down a little bit out of the way. There we go. All right. My first one here, let me go ahead and name these things. PXR Surface, Control C. So I'm going to call this Control V. And I'm going to call this a diffuse map because that's what I'm going to use. Uh, Control V. This one would be a spec map. And Control V. Um, now remember I said it's a spec gloss workflow. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and start with a gloss first. G L O, just so I can show you the differences. And this one here, I'm going to go Control V, and this will be my NOR map. Okay, these are the three that I absolutely need to have. My NOR map is optional. I'm going to go ahead and hook in my NOR map first, and I'm going to put that into my bump normal. My differential, is, again, is going to be easy result RGB, and I'm going to put it into the diffuse channel. Notice that it asks for diffuse. It doesn't ask for base metal. You put a base metal, a base color map, into this channel here, and it's not going to render correctly. You need to have a diffuse. 
my spec map it's an RGB result RGB and I'm going to put that into my specular face color now in doing so the one thing that I need to do to get my correct Fresnel is to make sure that my primary spec edge color right here it will be defaulted to black I want to put that all the way over to white my gloss map here well I'm gonna have the same problem that I did down here it's a black and white map or a uh, luminance map I guess I should say but if you notice I don't have any luminous channels so I'm going to use my PXR to float I'm going to go control B and I'm going to call it G L O S S F L O A T float I'm going to put in my RGB value there and then my result F to my specular roughness channel now when I put this when I render this let's see what I get ah there's that problem I told you about it just sometimes just doesn't want to show correctly because uh, I haven't saved it so let me go ahead and save it well, let's make sure that I'm definitely using my PXR surface which I am uh, let me go file save scene uh, let's make sure file save scene as scenes PBR everything okay and now I'm going to go open PBR everything open that up and now let's go ahead and render and see what we get and I'm still having a problem uh, so let me oh huh. it would really help if I wasn't being an absolute idiot and putting the textures in <laughs> okay small recording error so in my color map there I need to put my file in so let's go ahead sphere I want my diffuse channel put in there oh, it's easier to do for my hyper shade so let me oh there I go I can just grab it there <coughs> excuse me and let me go ahead and put in my um, let me see spec map there we go next one is my gloss map so let me grab there and I'm going to go ahead and find my gloss map and last is my nor map and let me go ahead and put in my normal map find it here any minute now there we go normal dot text okay uh, and I'm going to make sure that I set that to OpenGL and filter it with kelp Ron. there we go so now if I render it there now I'm getting it however here again I'm having a small problem and that I'm by using the gloss map I'm getting way too much specularity on the on these edges where I have a dielectric or a non-metal surface and the reason for that is pretty simple uh, it's applying that specular glossiness almost straight across the board it's treating everything as far as the glossiness goes as a metallic map so that is not the way to go and the reason is if we go ahead and look at the hyper shade real quick you'll see that that hookup asks for specular roughness now there's two ways I can fix this uh, it's not asking for a specular gloss map it's asking for a specular roughness map so I need a roughness map put in there well there's two things I can do 
if I'm in patterns here and I uh, look for an invert, I can use a PXR invert and PXR invert as for the RGB channel, so I can input that in there and I can then take the result RGB out, stick it into this input, and now I have inverted everything. So basically what I'm using right now is a gloss map that has been inverted to act as though it's a roughness map. So if I now render that again, now you're seeing that I'm getting that 3 to 5 percent of a reflectance that I would expect to get with a uh, dielectric or a nonmetal, but I'm getting that full range of of uh, specularity that I would with the metal uh, part. So uh, actually, the best way to do this, and like I say, it's a hybrid method. Uh, it's not exactly a spec loss is to go ahead and change this to a spec rough whoops rough map I can dump the invert node go RGB to RGB input that into my luminance whoops luminance and I want to change this to also denote that it's a rough float and now I'm putting in the rough, all of the roughness, all three channels, the red, green, and blue channel, all into uh, the float note, which then takes all of those values and converts it into one single file, which is going to come out as the luminous of all three channels. And so now if I go ahead and render this again, and pop this up here. You'll see that I'm pretty basically getting, well, let me see, that's not coming in 100% correct. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and dump that totally. I'm going to go File, Save Scene, Continue, and File, Open Scene, and scenes there we go uh, open this up and let me bring that render up and we'll wait for everything to kick in there we go <coughs> And it's taken its sweet time. There we go. Let me get Shift F to center that all in there. And there we go. Now I'm getting my correct values. Where I'm seeing that I've got a ton of uh, rust, I'm seeing very little specularity at the edge, which is my correct Fresnel, but where I'm getting that kind of where I got some metal coming through with the rust I'm getting that blending of specularity between that three to five percent range of the of the uh, dielectric or the rust and uh, the 60 to 70 percent that I would get with the metal and uh, I've done a side-by-side. -side. Uh, let me go ahead and stop this render here. And let me come over here to, let me see, I've got it here somewhere. Finding it, finding it. Ah, let's take this, let me bring this over. It's not wanting to come over. Why is it not wanting to do that? There we go. There we go. And these are my differences. This is my PXR Disney.
This is my spec gloss. This is my spec rough. And you can see the differences. Spec gloss is going to come through this way, whereas spec rough is going to come in this way. But now I've got another difference that I need to look at here real quick. And that's the rendering model. Oh, hold on just a minute. I've got a yapping dog in the background who needs to go outside and probably go potty. There she goes. Okay. Let's take a look at one more thing and I'm going to go to my hyper shade and open this up. And if I look at the material here, under advanced you see that right now I'm on the Beckman um, rendering method. And this really should be set to GGX. This works best for uh, PXR surface using uh, the uh, PBR rendering. And you can kind of see the difference here. Um, let me go ahead and close this. If we look at, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and save that scene here real quick. If we look at our uh, side-by-sides again, you can see this is with GGX and this is using the Beckman model. This is what I don't want to use. Spec gloss does not work. You can see way too much specularity on the, on the uh, dielectrics, whereas this seems to be working just beautifully, and this I don't like as well. And you may say, well, this I really do kind of like this, and that, again, is personal preference. But if we look at uh, Substance Painter, and let me go ahead and bring this up real quick. Give it a second. And if I, let me see, go to my recent, there we go. I'm opening this up. And this is my example that I pulled all of my maps from. Uh, I can render in this as well. So I'm going to render, and this is using V-Ray, an internal renderer that comes with it. And let's take a look at this. I'm just going to kind of kind of pull this over here a little bit so that we can see the difference. This is the way that they say the material should look when it's PBR, when it's rendered through an engine using PBR rendering. And you can see that between the two, whether I'm using GGX or if I'm using this, um, or if I'm using the Beckman model, that my better results matching with the real world is going to be with the PXR service using the spec rough workflow and using the GGX model. Okay, I hope you found this uh, somewhat informative. I've tried to keep this as short as possible. Again, I really advise everybody to go ahead and uh, look at those websites that I talked about before that explain more about the theory of PBR rendering, but for hooking up the correctly authored textures through these, uh, through either Substance Painter or Substance Designer or Quixel or what others, other software that you use, that you're going to get the right desired results and you're going to be rendering in a real-time environment way. Again, thank you and stay tuned for an introduction to my uh, uh, project that I'm going to be coming up with, uh, which I should be uh, authoring here in just about the next couple days.